Hi again, here we are to continue talking about uh, the table view in Xcode 7. And uh, in the previous videos, I set up a table view here. And, uh, you know, I have it displaying a couple cells with some, you know, default text. And you can see it just says hello 10 times, right? And so what are we going to do? Well, you know, that's not very useful. We want to actually put... Um, you know, specific text into the cells. Like we want to configure the cells and make them, you know, work a specific way. And you'll notice here also that um, when I select the cell and I customize it, like I, I'll make it a, you know, a right detail cell, and then maybe I'll put the image on the other side. And when I test my app, um, I'm not getting this table view cell. I'm getting just a plain basic cell, right? I'm not getting the right detail. I'm not getting the picture. Um, so let's cover those things right now. Okay, why is that happening? Well, so first of all, when we look in our view controller, um, we're getting 10 cells and they're all saying hello because, you know, we configured it that way. We said, you know, return 10 as the number of rows in a section. And then we are setting each cell to hello, Right, so we're just setting the text label to hello. That's the that's what they're all going to say, right? Um, and then also the cells are not the cells that we created in Storyboard because we're actually making brand new cells right here from UI Table View cells. So we're, you know, essentially creating a brand new cell right here, and it's just a basic cell, and then we're putting the word hello into it, right? So first things first. Let's set up some different text to appear in each cell, okay? So at the top of my class, what I'm going to do is create a variable called array, and I'll set it equal to an empty array, and maybe I'll just put something short in here, a couple strings, A, B, C, D, right? Okay? Something like that, right? And you, we could have more information, and this will be more complex in the future, but uh, for right now, we've just got a, an array of strings, and we want to display each of these strings in a cell, okay? So uh, when we get to the number of rows in section, what we'd like to do is we'd like to not say 10 cells. We'd like to say, give me a number of cells equal to the count of this array. So that's what we'll do. We'll say array.count. Okay, so now instead of, you know, returning a fixed number, you know, it'll return the number of cells that exist in the, or the number of items that exist in the array. And if you add more items to the array, that'll add another cell to the table view, right? It's very convenient. Okay, um, now down here, in order to display the text from the array in a cell, we need to sync up the index of the table view cell with the index of the string in the array. And conveniently, this cell for row at index path gives us the index of each cell in the table view, okay? And since we have the same number of cells as we have, you know, items in the array, then, um, you know, we know that those will sync up, right? And so what it does is it gives us the index path as um, a, an object called an NS index path, right? And the variable name is index path. These um, Swift functions can look a little confusing because oftentimes they put an extra name in here. So essentially, like when you have a, a value here between the commas, right? So this is one value here after the comma, I guess before the, the, the colon there, right? Um, the value here that comes first is just a name, like it's a descriptive name for this variable. And ideally what happens is, is when you read the function outside, you'll read it as table view cell for row at index path. Inside the function, you'll read it as index path for the variable, right? Because it would be kind of awkward here to, inside the function to say cell for row at index path when really you were talking about the index path, right? So that's why they write them this way. So this really isn't anything. It's not meaningful to this function here except as a name. This is really the variable, okay? So what is an NX index path? Well, an NX index, index path is a variable with two, or a, 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 an object with two properties. It's got a section number and a row number. And using this, we can identify any location in our table view. 
because our table view can be broken up into sections and then every section can have a number of items in it, okay? And that's the index. So in our case, we've only got one section, right? And we can and we can use it here like this, right? So, so we don't have to worry about the section number, okay? So when I s configure my table view cell, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say array and then the, the square brackets and that allows me to access the array variable here and then the square brackets, you know, if I include an index like number one, that'll give me the second item in the array. Zero would be the first item, right? Okay, but really what I wanna do is I want to say index path and remember index path has the two properties it's got section and row and really what I want is the row right now okay because I'm not using the sections I've only got one section so all of my cells will be in section one right or section zero okay so anyway so there we go right so we've got array and then we're gonna get at the item that's at the index path row and then we'll give that a test And then you can see it says A, B, C, D, right? So if you wanted to add a new item to your table view or to your array here and just see it displayed in the table view, um, we can put it here. And just by adding a new item to the array, it will increase the number of rows and then it will display the new item in the row, okay? So we'll test it and, uh, and then here we go and it says E, right? Okay. So that's working pretty good. And this, this can get pretty complicated right here. Like we could add a lot more stuff to this array. Let's leave it as it is for right now. And let's talk about why the cell doesn't look the way that it looks here in, in Storyboard, right? Well, um, we're actually just creating a brand new cell. And what I want to do is I want to use the cell that exists here in Storyboard. And in order to do that, what we need to do is we need to give this cell a, an identifier, a reuse identifier, okay? So we'll have to do that by, by selecting the cell. And it, sometimes if you double click the cell, it looks like this, and then you're not really selecting the cell, you're selecting the view or one of the interior labels, right? So if that happens, just click outside and then click once on the cell. And it should say table view cell at the top. So now you know that you're selecting the cell. And then you can see it's got the style, the image, and then the third item here says identifier. And then it's inside here, it says reuse identifier. And essentially this is just a string. So you're gonna type a value in there. I'm gonna type in cell with an uppercase C, okay? And that will be my reuse identifier for this cell, okay? So essentially that's just a string. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to our view controller now. And in, in the view controller file here, we created a new table view cell with UI table view cell, but actually this time I don't wanna create a table view cell with, with UI table view cell. What I wanna do is I wanna say table view. And so this is a reference to our table view and storyboard. And it has a special method called DQ reusable cell with identifier. Okay, DQ reusable cell with identifier. So a queue is like a, you know, a, a list or a row or you know when you're waiting in line at the store, you're in the queue, so to speak, right? So we're gonna DQ something, that means pull it out of the queue, right? So if there's a reusable cell in the queue that's not you know, in use right now, we can DQ it and use it again. So we're essentially saying like, hey, give me a cell that is that you all have already created but is not in use right now, and then we'll fill it with some data and reuse it, okay? So we'll choose this method, DQ, reusable cell with identifier, and then it wants an identifier here, and we have to type exactly the name that we used in Storyboard, okay? So we gotta type exactly that name that we used in the identifier field, okay? So it's gotta be spelled exactly the same. Okay, and the case matters, right? So I used an uppercase C, you gotta use uppercase C here, okay? So anyway, um, now that we've got the cell, I'm getting a couple errors here, and that's because, and if we option click on DQ reusable cell with identifier, you'll see that it returns a UI table view cell, but it's got the little question mark at the end. That means it returns an optional, right? So it's it's it might return a cell or it might not, right? So um, what we need to do is we need to, um, you know, 
uh, check that optional and make sure that it's 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 a regular cell. And you could do that a couple ways. I know that that cell is in table view, and I know that I gave it this name. So I'm going to just put the exclamation point at the end here and unwrap the optional, okay? And if you wanted, if you weren't sure, like you knew that your, your code may generate a cell or it may not for some reason, then you could use an iflet or some other, you know, configuration system here, right? Um, but I know that I have that cell and I know that it has this name, so I'm going to just unwrap the optional value with the exclamation point, and then that makes everything happy here, okay? So I'll save that and then I'll test. And then there's our cell. So now you can see we've got the picture, we've got the label, we've got the detail label, and that looks like what we had in uh, Storyboard, right? Okay, so anyway, there's a quick example there of um, using the table view cell and essentially, um, or the table view and the table view cell. Essentially, we've got an array here that has all the data that we're going to display in our table view. When we are in the number of rows in section, we return a count of the array to get the number of cells that we need. And then when we want to reuse a cell that we've created in Storyboard, we use DQ reusable cell with identifier, and then we include the identifier name for the cell. Okay? And then to get an item that's in the array up here that matches the index in the table view, we use the index path dot row. Okay? So anyway, thanks for watching. I hope that's helpful, and uh, good luck with your Xcode projects.